Hello and welcome to our service today. It's good to be with you again. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you that wherever we are, we are united together, united in our love as we come together to share the knowledge of your love for us. We thank you, Lord, that we can be united even if we're sitting at home on our own, that we are not alone, that we are part of your worldwide family and together sharing in our love for you. Amen. And we now hear our first song, Let Love Be Real. Let us pray. Eternal God, we adore you for your incredible life-changing love. A woman in the crowd is called daughter. Parents are given back their beloved child. You care enough to heal those considered unclean. You care enough to ensure a fragile child is fed. You are mighty in power, 
and yet so gentle. God, our Creator, our Redeemer and our Comforter, we adore you. And a prayer of confession. God of the streets and crowds of the world, we come to you in sorrow and shame for the times we have allowed prejudice to distance us from those you would draw close to. We bring to you the times when we have been too proud to ask for help and too distracted to help others. And we recognise the times when we have been quick to judge those we don't easily identify with and ignore those whose plight we have not taken to heart. In Jesus' name, we ask for forgiveness and an assurance of forgiveness. Lord, it is so easy to be part of the crowd, following behind others, not knowing what is taking place in front. Give us the power to make our way through the moving throng and the courage to touch you, to receive that life-changing experience. But we also ask that you stop and turn around and call us by name, saying those words that make us know that we are completely forgiven and unconditionally loved. Amen. And Joe will now bring our Gospel reading and after the reading we shall hear our next song, I Am A New Creation. Mark chapter 5 verses 21 to 43 When Jesus had crossed again in the boat to the other side, a great crowd gathered around him, and he was by the sea. Then one of the leaders of the synagogue, named Jairus, came, and when he saw him, fell at his feet and begged him repeatedly, My little daughter is at the point of death. Come and lay your hands on her, so that she may be made well and live. So he went with him. And a large crowd followed him and pressed in on him. Now there was a woman who had been suffering from hemorrhages for twelve years. She had endured much under many positions, and had spent all she had, and she was no better, but rather grew worse. She had heard about Jesus, and came up behind him in the crowd and touched his cloak, for she said, If I but touch his clothes, I may be made well. Immediately her hemorrhage stopped and she felt in her body that she was healed of her disease. Immediately aware that power had gone from him, Jesus turned her out in the crowd and said, Who touched my clothes? His disciples said to him, You see the crowd pressing in on you. How can you say, Who touched me? He looked all around to see who had done it. But the woman, knowing what had happened to her, came in fear and trembling, fell down before him and told him the whole truth. He said to her, Daughter, your faith has made you well. Go in peace and be healed of your disease. While he was still speaking, some people came from the leader's house to say, Your daughter is dead. Why trouble the teacher any further? But overhearing what they said, Jesus said to the leader of the synagogue, Do not fear, only believe. He allowed no one to follow him except Peter, James and John, the brother of James. When they came to the house of the leader of the synagogue, he saw a commotion, people weeping and wailing loudly. When he had entered, he said to them, Why do you make a commotion and weep? The child is not dead, but sleeping. And they laughed at him. Then he put them all outside and took the child's father and mother and those who were with him and went in where the child was. He took her by the hand and said to her, Talitha, come, which means little girl, get up. And immediately the girl got up and began to walk about. She was twelve years of age. At this they were overcome with amazement. He strictly ordered them that no one should know this, and told them to give her something to eat. Overflowing, my love just keeps. 
keeps on growing Here in the grace of God I stand And I will praise you, Lord Yes, I will praise you, Lord And I will sing of all that you have done A joy that knows no limits A lightness in my spirit to tell you the story of how I was in lockdown for 12 years after the birth of my youngest daughter Chloe. It was a difficult birth and afterwards the bleeding wouldn't stop and our laws meant I was impure and so I was unable to go anywhere, the synagogue or other houses, in case I accidentally touched someone and made them impure. I didn't feel impure, just so sad and alone and hurting. Even my daughter was taken away from me and I couldn't cuddle her or anyone. Thankfully, my husband John stayed by me. So many women find their husband leaves when something like this happens. John and I couldn't live together, but he helped me live in this old house and he and the family come together to visit. We stand at a distance and wave at each other. It breaks my heart every time. But I was grateful that they cared and looked after me as best they could. Because how do you get food, clothes, money to live? if you can't go into a shop or find work. My family were so helpful, unlike all the doctors I tried over the years, took most of our money and gave me all kinds of medicine which did no good at all. So many times I asked God for release, either death or to go back to my family and take up life again but nothing happened for 12 long years. Then the family started telling me about Jesus and all the people he had been healing. And I wondered if this was a time when God was answering my prayers. But how to meet him? 
Then I heard such a noise outside and people sh shouting that Jesus was coming to our village. I knew this was my chance. But still, how? The villagers knew me and would close around Jesus to keep me away. But I just couldn't lose a chance. So I dressed carefully, wrapping my shawl tightly around me and hoping that there would be so many people around that I wouldn't be noticed. I slipped out. I nearly rushed back home because it was so frightening to be out with so many people. But I kept going and thankfully people didn't notice me. I got so close to Jesus that then I didn't know what to do. Then I got the idea of touching his clothes and slipping away again. I knew without doubt that just touching his clothes would heal me. I hadn't expected him to realise what I had done. I was frightened when he stopped and asked. How I found the courage to speak, I don't know. But he looked so full of concern that I couldn't resist him and he spoke so lovingly to me. Not only did he cure me of my illness, but he restored me to life. Now I live with my husband and family. I have dignity and self-worth and I'm a valued member of our community. Jesus didn't curse me because of my impurity, but offered me love and respect. When I was reading today's passage, especially the part on the woman with the bleeding, I was reminded of a TV programme I saw some years ago about two Australian doctors, Dr Catherine and Dr Reg Hamlin, who spent their lives working in Ethiopia, treating women suffering from fistula following childbirth. Much of what these women suffered, isolation, rejection, years of misery, seems so resonant with the story from today's reading. I've continued to receive details of their work in Ethiopia and sadly both doctors have died. But thankfully their work continues and there's similar work being take, taking place around the world to help women live again and become part of society. Well, in our story, the unnamed woman and the Ethiopian women I've read about have received healing, but we know that this isn't always the case. Sadly, in the last year, we've heard daily the number of people dying from COVID-19. But although these might be numbers on our TV screens, they are people, people who are were loved and are missed by their family and friends. And I wonder what, as Christians, we can say. We might feel that we don't have an explanation, but we can offer hope because we believe that God is with us in our suffering. I I'm always amazed when I think that Jesus lived here on earth and knows what it is like for the joys and especially the sorrows that we face in our lives. And this is a way in which God heals us, for we know that we are not alone, that God in Jesus is walking alongside us. Love keeps us going, love of family and friends, but over all is the love of God, creator and sustainer of the universe, but as close to us as our next breath. Who knows us 
and loves us to the uttermost and will be with us in sickness and health and in the words of the old footprints poem will carry us when we are in need. As the woman found, Jesus can always be approached, not in fear, not in doubt, but in love and will always respond. Amen. And our next song is Brother, Sister, Let Me Serve You. Sister, let me serve you, let me be as Christ to you. Pray that I may have the grace to let you be my servant too. We are pilgrims on a journey. On the road, we are here to help each other walk the mile and bear the load. I will hold the Christ light for you in the night time of your fear. I will my hand out to you, speak the peace you long to hear. I will weep when you are weeping, when you laugh, I'll laugh with you. I will share your joy and sorrow till we've seen this journey through. When we sing to God in heaven, we shall find such harmony. Born of all we've known together, of Christ's love and agony. Brother, sister, let me serve you, let me be as Christ to you. Pray that I may have the grace to let you Let us bring our concerns for the world to God. Living God, in our prayers we bring to you those who are desperate for help and those who take great risks in their search for healing. We ask for your blessing on those who overcome political and cultural barriers to take aid and medical care to those in greatest need reaching out to the hungry, the traumatised, the displaced. Living God, we give thanks for the best work of television and social media, which brings into our homes the lives of the faces in the crowd and draws us closer to them and their concerns. 
We pray for reporters who risk their lives to bring us news and for photographers, camera and sound operators. And we pray for more opportunities for people's stories to be shared and heard, injustices to be highlighted and positive change to be celebrated. And in this week, as a new £50 note enters circulation, we remember Alan Turing and how badly he was treated. And we pray for the families of all those who have been pardoned posthumously and for an end to human injustice. Living God, we pray for those who fear that help will come too late. For all who have lost hope, for those who have lost livelihoods, homes and loved ones. We pray for those waiting for hospital treatment, for transplants or even just for a diagnosis. We pray especially for children who are seriously ill and for their families as they wait and watch. We think of those who are applying for citizenship in this country, especially those waiting to hear if they will be allowed to stay or sent back to the countries they have fled from. And we pray for governments and those who make decisions about budgets and for those who analyse data, those who decide policy and those who have the power to prioritise who is helped first and who must wait. And for those around the world, leaders, scientists or medical staff who are struggling to contain new COVID outbreaks. And loving God, we pray for the church and for one another, that we would reach out across barriers of culture and creed with faithfulness and integrity. Help us also to reach out to you in prayer for guidance, for strength, for wisdom and to reach out to one another as we journey together in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you very much for being with us today and I'd like to say thank you to Joe for the reading. Thank you to Chris for telling me what to do and when and putting all this together. Next week, the Reverend Andy Breyer from Inverness will be leading our online worship. And the blessing. The blessing of God, Father, Son and Holy Spirit be with us this day and forevermore. Amen. And our final hymn will be We Cannot Measure how you heal. Tends the heart we never.
Once 